100 degrees out here. We got these control arms knocked out and got the upper bag brackets mounted. Man, I am pumped. So now what I got to do is get out part of the CPP disc brake kit and we're going to pull out our ball joints because next we're going to install those ball joints onto the upper and lower control arms. Once we have those installed, we can go ahead and mount the upper and the lower control arm back on the truck. And then we can mount the airbag to the bracket, mount it up, mount the bottom of the bag, and we will be good to go to install those drop spindles and those disc brakes from CPP. Man, lots to come. This week has been awesome. I've had the past three days off, and I've been hard at work trying to get this truck knocked out. So let's do it. All right, so this kit is gonna come with 71 to 87 truck parts. And I'm not gonna open those up yet because it has the cotter pin and all that stuff. And I don't wanna lose that stuff. We've got the upper. There's another lower. So if you're changing out the control arms, the ball joints, all that kind of stuff. If you're going with drop spindles, you got to make sure your ball joints match your drop spindles. So drop spindles will come all the way from 63 to 72, all the way up to 87, and all the ball joints are different. So a lot of these drop kits, a lot of these disc brake kits come with the 71 to 87 ball joints because it's one of their best designs. It's thicker, it's uh, more durable, um, just overall better design. So that's what you'll see in most of those. Just make sure to match your ball joints with whatever drop spindle that you're gonna use. That's the most important. That's why I like buying a whole kit that has everything together to make sure everything matches up. All right, got the ball joint press here. You can rent these from the parts store. It's got everything you need to press in these bottom ball joints into the control arm. So let's go ahead and open up the ball joints now. I'm going to open up two bottom ones. So what you'll want to do, take off the nuts. These are just protective covers. So take off the rubber bushing. I got a surprise in there. So all we're going to try to do is take this ball joint and we're going to press it up in here. Then we're going to put that rubber part back over it. So this is where it gets tough if you don't have a ball joint press. So we can get those started in there, but you have to press those in there evenly or it's gonna mess it up. So what we're gonna do is get the ball joint press out. It's got a lot of different fittings and things like that. And it always takes me a second to uh, figure out how to do this. So since we're pressing this way, we're gonna want One of these goes here. That's what's gonna hold these little pieces. And we want, since we're pressing in, we want the bigger part to be up here so we can press it in, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do that right there. And go ahead and get this started. So what we want is that to be like that. And then we're going to use this down at the bottom to get a nice level. We want to push it in flat. So we're just going to push that in hand tight. Try to line everything up, get it hand tight. Now I always want to go slow with this at first, make sure everything is lining up. It. 
said take it slow, but I ain't got time for that today. So, we get a quick light. Go ahead and put your rubber part back over it. So the difference in the upper ball joints is these bolt in. So they're gonna slide in through the top and they're gonna bolt in with the nut on the bottom. And I don't believe these have to be pressed in. I believe these will just drop back in. I haven't done a set in a while, so we'll see if I'm right or wrong. These are not left, right specific. So either way that you put them will be fine. So on these, the same thing. Don't be like me. The first time I ever did a set of these, I left the rubbers on and I just tried to crank down the bolt and it ended up ripping all the rubber on there. So don't be like me. Once we get these installed, we'll slip the rubbers back on there. But it's okay because Francis is going to be bagged in the front before the day's over with. We're about to open up this CPP disc brake kit. This is two and a half inch spindles, disc brakes, all the stuff that you need. Here's what comes in the kit. Link is in the description. Hit the title of the video. Boom, there it is. Click that link. Order this kit. I got it in three days. And let's get the front of your truck on the ground. All right. See here, cheated a little bit. Already opened this, but we're gonna pull it all out. All right, start here. We have dust shields and the bolts for the dust shields. Disc brake power steering installation instructions. We all need those. Ooh. Oh, nice, it comes with this nice piece of, what is that, an eighth inch plywood. So when you're installing the disc brakes, you're gonna want this plywood to take up room in your trash with all the other cardboard. six lug disc brake kit on the picture on eBay it shows five lug but if you go in the description it shows six I don't know why it shows five lug in that description it took me forever to find it and then when I finally noticed the part number was for a six lug it's like man it's been there the whole time so don't do like I did and let the picture fool you go in the description make sure the last number of the part number is six and that means it is a six lug Unless you want five lug, you might want five lug, but I like six because the transport wheels will fit on there. And I like those transport wheels, as you know. Hey, I'm still trying to figure out what color to paint those transport wheels. So if you have a suggestion, let me know. I want to have the white wall, so I don't want to go white. But what I have thought of is a pearl white or like a cream, a very light cream to give that contrast. So it's kind of what, whoa. I'm down there. So it gives it the appearance of being white, but
but it's a little off-white because the interior is a little off-white um, and then have the white wall to incorporate the white top. The brake calipers right here. Just giving you an idea, this is kind of what comes in the kit right there, all the hoses and the fittings and all that kind of stuff. So all the stuff that I'm pulling out is going to need painted or cleared. So these brakes do have a protective coating on them, so you don't have to paint those. But the spindles you're going to need to clear or to put some kind of protective coating on. Here's the seals, the bearings, the brake lines, and the fittings for the spindles and all that. So also in this kit, I ordered the tie rod ends and all the different connectors and the sleeves and all that kind of stuff. That way the whole front end uh, will be brand new. Since I'm putting all new air ride and ball joints and all that stuff, the whole front end and all the steering components are going to be brand new. We also have power steering coming as well in a later episode. So this truck, even though it's patina, it's old looking, rusty a little bit, it's going to have all new suspension, all new steering parts, brake parts, uh, power steering, all the things that you can think of. Oh yeah, those are beefy. These are two and a half inch CPP drop spindles. So with cup lowers and drop spindles, it's going to get me as low as I can go without a drop member or Z in the frame or anything. But these look awesome. I'm going to have to coat these or paint them. I, I think I'm going to just clear these since everything else is black. I'll let the disc brakes and the spindles be silver. All right, so I got some paint drying on the drop spindles. So we're gonna go ahead and pack the bearings that go in the disc brakes, get the seal in there, We'll go ahead and pack the front ones as well, but we won't install those until the disc brakes are on the truck. But I'll kind of walk you through this. If you've never packed brakes before, guess what? I haven't either, but I watched a friend do it and I watched a video. So I'm pretty much a expert when it comes to packing these bearings. So I got some disc brake wheel bearing grease and I've got some gloves some towels and I'm gonna try not to make a super mess but one of the things that I saw in the videos is if you get your gloves on you get some of this grease in your palm and you're gonna take this and kind of do like that in your palm until you see it squirting out the top right here and once you do that and you can spin it and it looks all like it's all packed and all greased up and everything you should be good to go I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the front ones too, and then I'm gonna lay those right there. Put these in the back of this, then put the seal on there, hammer it on, and we'll be ready to slide these on the spindles once I get the spindles installed. Um, they should be dry here soon, so let's pack these bearings and let's learn something today. This is a bearing, so this bearing goes in the disc brakes, and whenever it spins, this is what keeps everything spinning nicely. So this needs packed with grease so these little wheels don't wear out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a little, I don't know how much is too much, but I'm going to get a little glob right there. This is how it was on the video. Grab this, and then just start kind of working it in right here, kind of pushing it in, pushing it in. Packing those bearings, packing them, packing them. So I put these new ones on. What I'm gonna do is just go right around here. And also, now these little caps right here, we're gonna put just kind of get them lined up a little bit. And we're gonna come in with the hammer and just tap those in. And be careful, cause these will bend pretty easy. Go. 
screws are in. Not too bad at all. All right, we got this two and a half inch drop spindle. We got it coated so it's not gonna rust. Now it's time to install this onto the truck. Okay, we're gonna slide the disc brake on there. As it sits on there, grab this other bearing. Slide that in there. This little washer, it's got a groove in it so it can only go one way. Put that on there, then the nut, and the thing about this is you don't have to get this super tight, and I'll show you what to do. So we got that on there, we're just going to use this to screw it on. So the way that I saw online, the way you test this is you spin it and it shouldn't spin more than two revolutions. And some people say a half a revolution. So we're at about a full right now. So I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit more. So that looks about it right there. spin it to go ahead and get get all that grease in there all right put the cotter pin in there This breaks.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this brake line on here. So it's pretty easy. Just the main important thing is these little washers that go in here, they go on each side of the brake line. And also you can tell that this brake line kind of has a flat spot. You want that flat spot, see how it's flat here and there's a little groove up top. You want that flat spot against this. That way there's not a gap whenever you go to install this. Cause if you install it the other way, it's gonna push up and there's gonna be a gap there. Go ahead and put those on both sides. Let's slide in nut and just kind of get started. Yeah. Make sure to take your little rubber piece that's in here that keeps trash out of it. You want to do that first. Get that tight, and then we are gonna go ahead and connect that in there. Make sure it comes with this little clip right here. And that little clip, you're just gonna pop in right there. Sometimes they're a little tough to get in there. I say sometimes, like every single time I go to do it. right there perfect now when that goes up and down that brake line should be out of the way uh, you can get stainless brake lines but with this kit it didn't come with them I've never had any issues with the brake lines right here remember this is kind of like aired all the way up this is where it's going to be but normally if you push this in this brake line is going to be further out of the way up here 